glorious and encouraging transformation. There is given to us from the Bible the message of the glorious manifestation of the Lord Jesus being transformed before three of his witnessing disciples, Peter, James, and John, also the appearing of Moses and Elijah, who were described as being present and talking with Jesus, which purposely have represented an encouragement for Jesus in consideration of the great price for mankind. He would soon be paying. The appearing of Moses and Elijah could very well have, have given the representation to Jesus of those as it was with Moses, many that shall be resurrected from the dead, and as it was with Elijah, those living that shall be transformed at the last blast of the trumpet and taken from the earth, those blessed to be in on the first resurrection and Jesus' glorious appearing shall be rejoicing in their immortal and incorrupt body state of being at the Lord Jesus' glorious appearing with his angels as he comes for his faithful bride, his waiting church. Matthew 17, 1 through 9. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, talking with him. Then answered Peter, and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen from the dead. Revelation 20, 4 through 5. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Revelation 26 Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. The power and coming of the Lord Jesus. We see that this awesome appearance of the Lord Jesus was a transformation involving the change of his clothing and the change of his facial appearance, all that was involved in the transformation experience was frightening to the disciples, and it took the Lord to give them calming, comfort, and peace. 
we also see from the experience which Peter, as well as John, had a part in, the Lord had a specific plan for them. Peter and John, in their committed obedience to the Lord Jesus, did as the Lord Jesus had at the time following his transfiguration had instructed them, which was not to share their experience till after his resurrection. Peter and John did wait to share the unusual and glorious event after the Lord Jesus was as prophesied, joyfully resurrected from the dead. Perhaps Peter and John, by the revelation given to them by personal revelation of God's Spirit, also understood the purpose of the experience. John, in his sharing, Jesus did state, We have seen his glory. The awesome experience involving the Lord Jesus being seen with impressive brilliance during his transformation and having the glorious specific appearance also with the presence of Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus indeed has meaning which relates to the Lord's work the most remembered occurrence during that incident to me was when the Heavenly Father awesomely honored and glorified His Son, the Lord Christ Jesus, by audibly saying, in reference to the Lord Jesus, Hear ye Him. Since the Lord Jesus wanted the transformation incident shared after His resurrection, tells me that the glorious event was also for our knowledge of the caring encouragement given to our Lord Jesus prior to him humbly accepting suffering and crucifixion. It also would give encouragement to the forgetful disciples that Jesus had said he would be resurrected for the joy, comfort, and the encouragement to all of us who would hear, accept, and share the awesome, everlasting gospel message of salvation. The sharing of Jesus' transformation is important to us in recognizing how much it influenced the faithfulness of Peter, James, and John. Second Peter 1 15 through 18. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty for he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. John 1, 14 And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The inspired communication we have from the Apostle Peter is also giving us the things we want to keep before our memory. That which we benefit from knowing is that the power and majesty of the Lord God was manifested through the willing, obedient coming of the Lord Jesus. To know it was purposely planned for the coming of the Lord Jesus to by love provide for us through his life-giving grace, salvation, 
by the Heavenly Father's gift, which was humbly delivered by the heart of a loving Son, submitted to give redemptive, soul-delivering salvation. Full salvation was made available for us who are the body, the bride of the Lord Christ Jesus, to forever rejoice in him and his works. <laughs>